Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients resolve bloating, gas, and digestive issues so they can look and feel their best. This video is going to be on probiotics. Probiotics are live microorganisms, and when they're taken in adequate amounts, they can be beneficial to humans, aka their hosts. Although dead probiotic bacteria may have some beneficial effects in their host, most of the beneficial effects of probiotics likely come from live microorganisms. Organisms. But before these live microorganisms can begin helping you, they need to be able to survive as they pass through your stomach, which is very acidic. There is a lot of debate on whether probiotics should be taken before meals, during meals, after meals, on an empty stomach, or on a full stomach. We're going to look at as many research papers as possible to see if we can determine one, is there actually a best time to take probiotics in relation to food? Two, do specific foods affect probiotic survival? And three, do certain strains of probiotics survive better or worse. The most common types of probiotic that you can buy in stores include lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, saccharomyces boulardii, and then soil-based organisms, which are also called spore-forming bacteria. Therefore, these are the ones we're going to focus on in this video. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you my three biggest takeaways and one specific recommendation on how to actually take probiotics. As a quick note, there's definitely other factors that can impact how much benefit these probiotics have in your body when you take them. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to just be focusing on when to take them in relation to meals. Let's look at some of the research. This 2011 study by the Journal of Beneficial Microbes titled The Impact of Meals on a Probiotic During Transit Through a Model of the Human Upper Gastrointestinal Tract investigated four different probiotic strains. I'm not going to read the subspecies, but they were the Lactobacillus helveticus, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, Bifidobacterium longum, and Saccharomyces boulardii. It found that survival of all the bacteria in the product was best when given with a meal or 30 minutes before a meal. Food given was cooked oatmeal with milk. Probiotics given 30 minutes after the meal did not survive in high numbers. Survival in milk with 1% milk fat in oatmeal milk gruel were significantly better than apple juice or spring water. Saccharomyces boulardii was not affected by time of meal or the buffering capacity of the meal. Protein content of the meal was probably not as important for the survival of the bacteria as the fat content. We conclude that ideally, non-enteric coated bacterial probiotic products should be taken with or just prior to a meal containing some fats. Non-enteric coated probiotics are the ones where if you open up the capsule, it's just dry powder inside. They're the most common ones that you'll find in stores and online. So according to this particular study, taking Lactobacillus helveticus, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, and Bifidobacterium longum during meals or before meals was best. Taking Lactobacillus helveticus and rhamnosus with a meal that contains some fat was also better. And then with Saccharomyces boulardii, it doesn't seem to matter whether you take it with food or not take it with food or the type of food you take it with. All right, quick time out from the video for an important announcement. So from 2011 to about 2019, I struggled daily with constant bloating and gas. And the problem, which I didn't realize at the time, was that I had SIBO. I had no idea what to do about it and no idea where to get help. If I had the right information and the right support, my symptoms could have been gone in a matter of weeks instead of eight years. The big announcement is I created SIBO Shortcut because I believe if people had both all the information that they needed and the proper support, they would have exactly what they needed to succeed. And this is what SIBO Shortcut offers. The September kickoff officially starts September 1st, but space is extremely limited. For more information, click on the first link in the description below. It's a free webinar on my three SIBO treatment frameworks and everything that is offered in this new opportunity. And now back to the video. This 2011 study from the Food Microbiology Journal looked at the survival rates of three bacteria, which were Lactobacillus casei shirota, Lactobacillus casei immunitis, and Lactobacillus acidophilus, to see if they survive better when taken with either water or milk. This study found that the percent of recovery in logarithmic phase ranged from 1% to 43.8% in water for all tested strains, and from 80.5% to 197% in milk. Therefore, according to this study, the survival 
survival rate of these species was significantly higher when taken with milk as compared to water. This 2007 study from the Journal of Dairy Science looked at how well various bifidobacterium probiotics survive stomach acid. No food was involved in this study. This study found that of all strains tested, representatives of bifidobacterium animalis lactis appear to be most capable to survive gastric transit, which is probably due to their enhanced acid tolerance compared with other bifidobacterium species. So based on the results of this study, it seems like bifidobacterium species probiotics can really be affected negatively by strong stomach acid. However, this bifidobacterium animalis lactis does not seem to be affected by stomach acid as much. And as an additional note, lactobacillus species in general also tend to survive high stomach acid better than these bifidobacterium species. This 2019 study from the Journal of Beneficial Microbes looked at how well bacillus coagulans, which is a common soil-based organism or spore-forming bacteria, survived the human digestive tract. No food was involved in this study. It found that survival after transit through the gastric compartment was high at 97%, and most cells were still in spore form at 76%. Survival after transit through TIM1 on average was 51%. You'd really have to read the methods of how they did this trial for this sentence to really make sense, but what this means is 97% of these soil-based organisms actually made it through the stomach still alive. But then interestingly, only about 51% of them made it all the way through the small intestines. But it does appear that this probiotic survives strong stomach acid perfectly fine and does not need to be taken with a meal. And for the last study, if you're somebody that likes chocolate, this is probably going to make you pretty happy. This 2010 study by the International Journal of Food Microbiology looked at whether taking probiotics with chocolate compared to regular milk protected probiotics more through the passage of the stomach and intestine. Lactobacillus helveticus and bifidobacterium longum were used for this study. It found that both chocolates, because they use a dark and a milk chocolate, offered superior protection at 91% and 80% for Lactobacillus helveticus and Bifidobacterium longum, respectively compared to only 20% and 31% in milk. Therefore, at least in this study, chocolate was more helpful at helping probiotics survive than milk was. As a final note, there's a ton of research studies looking at this topic. I want to point out that all the studies used in this video and all of them that I actually found were in vitro studies, meaning that they were done in labs that simulate the human digestive tract. Typically, when looking at studies, you really want to find ones ideally done on actual humans. However, in this case, regardless of this, I actually believe doing it this way in this scenario reduces a lot of the variables, which is a good thing and probably makes it a lot easier to obtain accurate data. And to take it one step further, I'm not really sure this would be possible to do in actual humans anyway. Some conclusions based on these studies. Number one, for Saccharomyces boulardii and soil-based organisms, aka spore-forming probiotics, it doesn't seem to matter whether you take them with food or on an empty stomach. They survive stomach acid well. Number two, for lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species. In general, it seems like taking them with food is better than taking them on an empty stomach. And then takeaway number three, for lactobacillus and bifidobacterium species, hopefully you're already taking them with a meal or some food, but it also seems like taking them with food that contains some fat also helps them survive stomach acid better. So if I was to give you one takeaway for this entire video, if you're taking a probiotic, I would recommend you take it in the middle of the meal and a meal that contains some fat. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I post a new full-length video every Monday evening and YouTube shorts throughout the week. Please leave any questions or comments in the chat thread down below. And since you made it till the end, I really think you'll enjoy one of these two videos next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.